Good morning, Y family. I'm Leslie Taylor Boring, and welcome back to my home. I had a request from a Y member to do anything I can help for their golf swing. So with this session today, I'm going to divide it up in four parts. We're going to work on well awareness of the pelvis. We're going to work on some general strengthening, some flexibility and mobility mixed in as well. For equipment, we're going to need your mat, small ball towel or pillow, a looped band, one that's tied together, light and medium weights, possibly heavy when we get to the weighted section. I'm going to use a yoga strap for some of the standing rotational things. You can use one of your golf clubs. Just make sure when we change sides, turn the side, just keeping that weight balance. A yardstick or broomstick without the bristles on it will work as well. If you're ready to go ahead down, go ahead onto your mat. If you're feeling really, really stiff and need to warm up, go ahead, turn this off and warm up. Everything is going to be progressive in nature, but better if you're a little bit warmer to go on into the session. But if you're ready, let's make our way on down. Always safely, take your time. You're going to lie on your back. Check out your feet before you go down. Make sure they're at least two fist distance apart, toes are reaching forward. Once you're down, we're going to find that neutral spine. That means you have your natural curve in your lower lumbar. You can get your fingers underneath there. You can tighten your abs. Make sure you don't start pressing on into it. Just tighten them lightly. You should not be able to get your fist underneath there. If you put your hands on top of your pelvis, on the bone, it's nice and level. Draw your shoulders down and keep them wide so you can feel your collarbones open in front and your scapulas resting on the back. We're going to start with the pelvic rocks. I'd like you to think about the top of your head, your face, speed 12 o'clock, down by your knees is 6 o'clock. So we're going to lift the pelvis by tightening the abdominals, pulling slightly in. You should feel your lower back lengthen, then lifting up, coming towards at noon. And then as you release, you're going to go the opposite way and feel your back arch. You can take your thumb to put at the bottom of your ribs and your fingers to the top of your pelvis and feel everything move. We're going to go back, lifting up, going towards 12 o'clock. Now we're going to go the opposite way, lifting the top, going towards the bottom. Let's do a couple more, and then we're going to add 3 and 9 o'clock in. Just moving through. Use your breath. Don't hold your breath. Give yourself one more rock each way. And then find that neutral spine again, right in the middle. Now we're going to pretend that the left side of your body is 3 o'clock and the right side is 9 o'clock. Your knees are going to move a little bit. I don't want you to force your feet to the ground. But if you start feeling everything rocking, you know those hips need to be strengthened a little bit more along with the lower back, and those are things that we're going to address with this. Lift up. Your hip is going to lift slightly, but think of tipping your pelvis over towards 9 o'clock. Then bring it back down. Now 9 o'clock is going to go towards 3 o'clock. Add back down. And let's do that several more times. Again, if everything is really stiff, it may take a few. And if you've never moved your pelvis like this before, it's a definite new sensation. If you've had an accident or abdominal surgery, you may have done this is called a pelvic clock. And if you haven't, welcome. You got to learn something new today. I'm not making this up. Let's get one more each side, and then we're going to start to find those muscles. Once you're even, let's just do a regular pelvic tilt. That's going to be our start. On your exhale, bring 12 and 6 towards each other, lightly flattening versus rocking back and forth as if you had a bowl of water. And then gently release back to your neutral. Now, pull down if there was somebody on the other side of your belly button. Don't think of smashing. And release. Make this an exhale. Think of everything coming together. And if you touch by your belly button or right below, you feel those muscles tighten. And feel them soften. Let's get three more. Draw the structures towards each other. Not so hard that your neck moves. And release. If you don't get it right now, practice will help. And just shoot me an email. We'll figure it out. One more here. Now I really want you to place your hands on your belly and feel that tightness. Feel how everything drew together. We're going to do that with going to our sides. 
And let's bring three o'clock up and tighten those muscles. Feel those muscles engage, release, flatten back out. We're staying with three o'clock. Tip that bottle, uh, bowl of water over, squeeze those muscles in and towards each other. Release back down. And lift three o'clock, take it towards nine, tighten those muscles. Look and see what your knees are doing. Try to encourage them to stay. And release. Don't worry, we'll have work for them as well. Lift up, shifting that bowl of water, tighten those muscles. Release back down. Just going to use some of this awareness when you're standing as well. And release. Now think of shifting nine o'clock, lifting up to there. Now tighten those muscles, pull in. And release. So think of pulling in through the belly button and pull slightly up towards your diaphragm. You can engage your pelvic floor here as well. Let's get three more. Good. Inhale and release. Lift up. Exhale, tighten those muscles. You never want to inhale and tighten. Your abdominal muscles are in multiple layers. And if you start flowing into them, you're going to make that a tight pooch. Nobody wants that, and actually it will cause problems in your spine over time. Here's our last one. Come back center, give yourself that regular pelvic tilt, drawing the structures together, lightly flattening your spine. That should feel really nice. We're gonna do three more of those, and then we're gonna do what's called the pelvic peel, taking a little bit more up, an articulated bridge to start warming up the spine and some of those muscles that are very intricate for your golf game. One more, and you're going just right to the top of your pelvis. You're not trying to lift up, you're just lengthening it. Now we're gonna to start to add a little bit of a lift, what's called a pelvic peel. You're gonna lift on up just to the bottom of your ribs. So right about belly button, you don't wanna go up any further. And then lower back down one vertebrae one inch at a time. This is an exhale, draw the abs in, peel up, Take a breath here, exhale, roll back down, get a control over that. If you can have flowing through the straw here, make that a little deeper with those transverse abdominus muscles, that'll make that even more effective for strengthening all the little multifidae that go around the facets of the spine. One more, five won't hurt you. That's the normal number. I have people start with anyway. When you take this to an articulated bridge, so go from that pelvic tilt to a pelvic peel, I'd like you to go up into where you feel like you want to shift your neck or your collarbone. Stop there, feet are flat on the ground. Exhale, use those abdominals to help lower down so that way you can engage the back. And again, exhale, lifting up one vertebrae at a time. There's light pressure in the feet, so the legs aren't doing the work. Take a breath, lower back down. Two more, then we're going to do five regular bridges. Exhale, lower down. Keep the neck nice and long. Don't try to work through your feet or your arms. Here's your last one. This will help your mobility. Because while you're working in different planes with your golf game, the amount of rotation, you need those multi-fit and strong. Now, hip hinge bridge. Take those toes long, press through your feet, squeeze through your bottom, lift up. Pause here for a moment. Walk the arms down a little bit. Pretend there's somebody underneath and somebody over top pulling. The person underneath is pushing you up. Now release that to lower down. Press through the feet, squeeze through the glutes to lift. It shouldn't be just the legs going along or just the glutes going along. And release, keep those abs in and up. We're gonna stay here and draw those abs in and up. So pull down towards the spine, feel that tighten by your lower belly, keep that there. Release legs and glutes. Press back up, try to keep those abs. Release down, press back up, and release down, and press back up. Release everything for a moment. Hug your knees into your chest, because if you've never done that before, you're probably going, ah, ah. or maybe just stress because I've never done that before. Did I find those muscles? You can always stop this and repeat as many times as needed, but don't go to the point you're so tired you can't do the rest of the workout. Let's lower the legs on down, roll to your better side. Never do one of these things to try to flip yourself up. Roll to your side as we're gonna make our way back standing. We're gonna go to our general strength section here, but we're gonna start out with finding that awareness as we prepare for our squats. Either two fist distance, that means your fist fit between to armpit distance apart. 
and turn a little bit on the diagonal here. Toes are reaching forward. Now soften through your knees a little bit. Place the thumbs on the bottoms of the ribs and the top of the pelvis. And bring three o'clock forward, take it back. Nine o'clock forward, take it back. Bring six o'clock up. Bring three, excuse me, noon down. Feel what is happening there. Now find, bring them all towards each other. Find that little tightening there. I want you to keep the abs in, up towards the diaphragm, add the pelvic floor if you need. You have a slight length of the tailbone so you don't have six o'clock running away and 12 o'clock coming towards it. You never want to be there whether it's golf or not. 10 squats here. Let's take a breath, float the arms out, press the ground away, squeeze the glutes to come up. Keep that ab engagement. Sit back. And up. Your gaze is going to change. Don't try to crook your neck to keep seeing and looking at something ahead of you. Let your head go along with the rest of your spine. You've got five more pressing away and up. This first set will be out without any bands or weights because I want you to find that musculature and really work on holding the abs there. Three more. Drop and up. Drop, and up. Last one for now. Hold all of that there, soften through the knees. We're gonna hinge over for center rows. If you lost it hinging, draw everything back in. Let your arms hang. Just pretend you're holding light weights. Don't go to total white knuckle there. With an inhale, purposely squeeze the shoulders, long spine, exhale, and release. With an inhale, squeeze. Because you can grab as heavy weights as you want, but if you're using the wrong muscles, you're, you've lost battle there. Squeeze those shoulder blades in. This is for the back because a lot of times the biceps will take over and you're pulling stuff and your back is just, hey, I'll let them do it. We've got four more here. Inhale, squeeze, release. We're going for strength, that muscular endurance. That's why we're not pulling it. Work speed and release. And squeeze, release. Let's get one more because I think that was only nine. Gently release the arms down, press yourself tall. We're going to work the abdominals this time, so release the pelvic floor if you can. If you're a back problem, please don't. We're going to inhale as we sit with our squat. Exhale, blow through the straw. As you're coming up, you should feel the difference in the hollowing out. Inhale, exhale. Going for five, then we're Staying down. Here's three. Two. Trying to hollow out those abs more. One. Now let's hinge from the hips. Keep the abdominal engagement. Come back down. We're going to pull the arms straight back. Bent over rear delt pull back. And float them back out. We're going to have five of these. Just getting some mobility in the backs of the arms. Four, five. Let those arms hang there, knuckles looking down, pretending to hold those weights lightly. With an inhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together, reaching out if you were putting something on end tables on either side of you. Think long versus high. On your exhale, try to hollow out the abs more. Again, lead with those shoulder blades. Don't let the back just go, huh. And release. And we'll squeeze. Release three. Squeeze. Four. Inhale, squeeze. Five. The inhale is important here to work the serratus, posterior, and anterior. Here's seven. And release. Eight. Release. Inhale, squeeze nine. Release, because it's not just about the shoulders, because then you can put the exhale and inhale and invert them. Give yourself another breath here. Let's press the ground away. Come up tall. Roll your shoulders. We're going to do an easy knee lift here. Keep that ab engagement. Tailbone slightly lengthen. We're going to start with that right side. Shift your weight ever so lightly. Spread the toes. Pull up to the kneecap. Tighten your bum. Lift the leg. Tap down. Lift, tap two, lift, tap three, lift, tap four, lift, tap five, lift, tap six, lift, 
tap seven, lift, tap eight, keep an engagement, nine, and lift, and ten. Other side, pull up that kneecap, tighten that bum, and float that leg up, tap down. Stay nice and steady, two, three, lift, four, lift, five, where's your abs, where's that? Stability side of the hip, eight, lift, nine, lift, and ten. I'm going to lower that down. We're going to get a set of lateral raises here. Arms are long. We're reaching for those end tables. Make sure you're not doing this. You're not doing this. It's your shoulders, not your biceps. So float the arms long and lower, two, and lower. If you're not certain what you're working, Let's pause at five. We're going to do three arms for each arm so you can feel. Take that left hand over on that right shoulder. When you feel that deltoid engaged, that's as far as you need to go. Lower down. Let's do two more here. Don't worry. We're going to get some weighted steps. Again, this is about finding the right muscles. Let's go to the other side. Lift. Lower. Two. Lower. And three and lower, standing tall again. We're just gonna bring our arms up, extend them out long, drop your shoulder blades, torso rotations, press the ground away with your legs. Don't walk, but lengthen. Go into the right first. Inhale as your turn, so we're still warming everything up a little bit more. Exhale, tighten the abs center. Just going through the ribs to start. When we make this bigger, we will go through the hips. Three, going for five for each side, four, and five, other side. Inhale, exhale, keep it ab engagement. Exhale, three, exhale, four, exhale, five, exhale. Good, lower the arms down. We go for an easy side step to the right. Step out, transfer the weight, squeeze the glutes to come back up. It's gonna be mainly that stability side that's squeezing you up. So that left side's doing a lot of work right now. Three, four, other side. And step, hold that ab engagement. Two, squeeze off this glute. Three, four, and five. Find your balance, turn that left leg out just slightly, tighten to the glute, lift up, hover that right leg, take it to the side. Bring it in, and side, in, three, in, four, in, five, and pause there. Change sides, turn that leg up ever so slightly, lengthen, tighten, flex that left foot, take it out, bring it in, out, in. So it's barely hovering, it's barely touching the ground, but you're not hitching up your hip trying to do this you've got that ab awareness of where your pelvis is at. Good. Get yourself a shoulder bowl. Take your arms up here. Make goal post arms. We're going to lift up out of that right side first, tipping to your left. Take a breath. Exhale as you tip. Bring those abs in more. Inhale up. And again. Exhale, tip. Up for two. And tip. Up for three. Exhale, over. Up for four, and you're welcome if you wanted to put that yardstick or broomstick on in your hands, but not necessary now. Other side, and up. Exhale, over, and up. Think of those ribs opening up. Here's four. Pull the back down. Don't lift up with your other side. And lift and pull them down. Give yourself a shoulder roll here. We're going to take the arms out, bring them in for a moment, rotate through. If you're returning little doorknobs, bring them down, turn little doorknobs. One more time, little doorknobs. Now let's grab some light weight and your band. You can go ahead and bring that band around your ankles just to have it on steady. We're going to start out with our squats, so if you're not comfortable holding weights with squats, go ahead and sit them down. Again, two fist armpit distance apart. We're going to exhale as you sit back, tighten those abs, inhale up, exhale, hollow them out, up for two, hollow out even more, 
up for three, four, and up. You're pressing through your feet, squeezing through the glutes. Seven, and up. Eight, and up. Nine, and up. And 10. Carefully come up, hinge on over, draw those abs in now, pelvic floor engage. Center rows here. Inhale, you know, here, squeeze. Exhale, release. And squeeze, drawing those shoulder blades into the spine, that's your leader. Release four, and squeeze. Release five, and squeeze. Release six, squeeze. Release seven, squeeze. Release eight, squeeze. Release nine, squeeze. Release down for 10, we're gonna pull straight back for five. Pull back, release. Give it that little hold, release. Drawing the shoulders down towards the hips, three. Pull, four, pull, and five. Press the ground away, roll up one vertebrae at a time. Prepare to step to your right side and squat. So you step out, squat, squeeze up, in. Step, toes look forward, everything is still nice and even. You're stepping into that band. Step, three, go for five, four, and five, left side, step into that band. Make sure you're controlling it. Make sure those abdominals are still connected. Two, step, sit, squeeze up, in, step, sit, squeeze up, and in. Pause there. We're gonna hinge back over. We've got our rear flies reaching for the side tables. Inhale, squeeze, exhale, release. Inhale, squeeze, release two. Inhale, squeeze, release three. Inhale, squeeze, release four. And squeeze, halfway. Inhale, squeeze, release six. Inhale, squeeze, release seven. Squeeze, release eight. Squeeze, release nine. And inhale, squeeze, release 10. Give yourself a forward fold, stack your spine over top of your head for a moment, knees soft, then press the ground away and gently roll up one vertebrae at a time. Good. Go to the edge of your mat, and if you have room to take it across your room, go for 10 steps. Otherwise, we're just going to take a little bit smaller step and we'll work our way back and forth across our mat. Traveling squat. You sit and up. Two, and up. Three, and up. Four, and up. Five, and up. Six, and up. Seven, and up. Eight, and up. Nine, and up. Here's ten. We're going to take it back, leaning with that opposite leg. Toes are looking forward. You still have that ab connection. And three, and up. Four, and up. Five, and up. Even when you're shifting directions, everything's linear. Seven, and up. Eight, and up. Nine, and up. And ten. Gently come up. Find your way back to your mat. Case it got away from you. Take the legs a little bit wide now so you do feel some resistance in the band and press into it, lift up through those arches. You should be right about shoulder width apart. We're gonna get a set of scat squeezes and then a set of lateral raises. Then we're gonna set our weights down momentarily. The scat squeezes, you're going, yes, back is huge here. Squeeze in with an inhale. Shoulder blades just come together, arms hang long. Exhale, release, just five release. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release. Inhale, squeeze, and release. Helps open up the pecs as well. Now draw the legs in your two fist distance apart. Soften through the knees. And if whatever you grab feels too much and you already know you need to go to delt raises, go to a delt raise. Because you, everybody hits a point where you have to for safety of the shoulder. Doesn't matter if you're a professional lineman 
if you're 105 and you're still out on the golf course, everybody hits that point. So here we go. If it's still light weights that you have in your hands, you didn't go big. Well, 20s are my light weights. If you're using 20s, you need to be here to belt raise. Float those arms up, reach for the end tables. Again, think of the muscle you're working versus what should not be helping you. Three, lower, four, lower, five. Knuckles nice and straight so they're not curved down and then not extended up. Seven, maybe six, seven, lower, eight, lower, nine, we're in the range, lower, and ten. Gently lower, give yourself that shoulder roll. We sit these down momentarily. Grab your broomstick or your yardstick if you're using your golf club. If you're going to use a yoga strap like I am, we're going to press back into that, but not too overly wide. Knees are a little soft, toes are forward. Think of your golf stance here. So you've got that little slight tip. So think three, six, 12 and 9, where everything is level, abs are in and up. Bring your position here just to the right first. Inhale through the ribs, exhale center. And through the ribs, center two. Through the ribs, center three. Two more through the ribs, then we go for the hips. Last through the ribs, now go for the hips. Go for your bigger swing, and center. And turn, exhale center. Pile out those abs, three. And turn, four, and turn, five. Good. Let's prepare for that other side. Recheck everything where your knees are looking at towards those middle toes, where your tailbone is at, the three, six, nine, and twelve are at, just for the ribs first. Inhale, turn, exhale, seven, and turn, two, and turn, three, four, and turn. And five, now through the hips. Bigger turn. Good. Turn three. Exhale. Turn four. Exhale. Turn five. And an exhale. Press the ground away to come up. Take the tension off the band. Keep the two fist distance apart. Check out where everything is at. Tailbones lengthen. Bring those arms on up to the sky. Knuckles are looking straight up. You're right. Either it just depends on your shoulder mobility. Don't pop your ribs just to bring your arms over your head. You may need your arms full forward. Nothing wrong with that. Go to the right first. Exhale your weight over so those ribs on that left side open up. Inhale, close that. Exhale over two and close. Take it over three and close. Over four, close. And five. Take it to the left side. Lift out on those ribs. Purposely pull them down. Lift up. Pull down two. Lift up. Pull down three. Exhale it up. Inhale it down. Exhale it up. And inhale it down. Float the arms down. We have one more set with a couple more variations. We're going to add on in. Grab your heavier set of weights. We're going to start out with knee lifts. With that band, yes, 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 we will. You will be fine. Turn that left foot out ever so slightly. Pull up that quadricep, tighten that glute. Lift into that band, tap down. Lift into it, tap two. Lift, tap three. So pretend you're climbing a step versus folding and tucking your leg. Halfway, lift six, tap. Lift seven, tailbone is down. You have that ab engagement. If you don't have it, get it back. Nine, good, and 10. Lower down, rotate that side out, lengthen through the quad, tighten that bum, find those abs, shoulders down, lift it to that band, tap. Lift two, tap. Lift three, tap. Lift four, tap. Lift five, tap. Lift six, Tap, lift seven, tap, eight, tap, nine, tap, and ten. Good, bring it down, two fist distance apart. Bring in another set of those scap squeezes. With your exhale, squeeze together, roll a little bit differently this time. Inhale, release. Exhale, squeeze. Release two. Exhale, squeeze. 
release three, and squeeze, release four, squeeze, release five, squeeze, release six, squeeze, release seven, keep the shoulder blades down, keep those abs engaged, you're just hollowing out more with that exhale, here's ten, gently release, you can hold your weights, we're going to do side to side squats, or you can sit them down if you're feeling cumbersome. Starting with the right side, going for 10. So you sit out into that band, toes forward, squeeze up, keep everything engaged, pelvic floor as well. And up, take this right, and up. Take this left, and up, and right, and up, left, and up. Four more, right, and up, left, and up. Last one, right, and up, last left, come up to fist distance apart, keep the abs fully engaged, hinge on over, last set of rows, turn your palms out for the first five, inhales, you squeeze in, exhale, release, inhale, squeeze, release for two, and squeeze, release three, squeeze, release four, squeeze, Release five, now turn palms in. Don't go out wide, stay here tight. Squeeze in, release. It's much easier on the spine and the neck for your scapular row to keep it here. Release, two more, release. Keep that ab engagement, release. Carefully pouring yourself up. We're gonna set these weights down. Slide your band off. And we're going to go four light weights. We've got a retract, protract, we're going to do as we make our way on back down. We're going to take our right leg forward and the left leg back. And if you find weight is too much for this, you could have just your golf club in this hand, nothing in this hand. You could go the opposite way. The same with the weight. Two fist distance apart. It's an inhale here as you reach through with that left arm. Exhale, lead with your elbow, opening up, follow it, fold back in, inhale back forward. As you're exhaling, opening, hollow out those abs. And reach, got another plane here for that spine. Here's three. Inhale, open for four, keep your shoulder blades down. Inhale, going for eight, open for five. Good. Here's opening for six. Open for seven. And open for eight. This is great for your anchor mobility as well as the proprioception with the change of range of motion. Change sides. Right sides back. Left sides forward. Drop your shoulders. Inhales, you reach through with that right arm. Exhale, open. Folding all the way through, then you fold, coming back through with your breath. Exhale, hollow it out. Keep your spine over top of your pelvis. Open for three. And close. Open for four. And close. Open for five. Keep the other arm long. And close. Open for six. And close. Open for seven, and close. Think of those abs, there's your last one. Gently close, roll your shoulders, we're gonna get an eagle stretch. Then we've got another standing rotation set to do that we're gonna add on before we make our way down. This is, you see, we've made our way into a little bit more mobility, deeper core, and balance. Bring your right arm forward, bring that Elbow somewhere in line with your navel. Thumb is facing towards your pinky away. Scoop that left arm up and around. If the hands just go here, that's great. As long as you can find something to connect with, then start your squeeze. You don't need to do this because this takes away from the integrity of the stretch. Lift up through the elbows, pull down through the shoulder blades, give yourself a little tip. Big breaths that open up the serratus. We've worked that fairly heavily today, particularly with the breath giving it some extra care to help with your rotation and strength for the upper portion of the body. One more breath here. Gently bring the neck back up. 
Start to release the squeeze, unwind, shoulder roll, bring the opposite arm in front, sweep it up. They're always going to be a little different. Find where you can get that squeeze, because that squeeze pulls the shoulders, the rhomboids and teres apart to help open up the serratus, and the breath finishes opening up those muscles to stretch that. Lift up through the elbow, tip through the chin. Nice big breath here. Knees are just soft. Keeping your squeeze going. One more full breath here. Let that breath go. With your next inhale, bring the head back up in alignment. Start to release your squeeze. Give yourself a shoulder roll. Grab whatever you're using for the rotations, whether it's a strap, belt, towel, golf club, yardstick. Bring the arms on up in front of you first. Two fist distance apart. We're going to start with the ribs. We're going to inhale to the right through the ribs. Exhale, center. And turn, back, center. Three, center. Four, center. Keep your shoulders down. Be aware of those abs. Center. Now hinge on over just through the ribs. And turn, center. Two, think of where your pelvis is at. Soften your knees a little bit if you need to to go into that golf stance. Last one just through the ribs. Now take it out through the hips. Go ahead. Two. Three. Four. And five. And for you golfers, keep your head down. Even if you're not a right hand shot, just practice. You could do the weight shift as you go through. Just stay small. That's your exhales. You turn purposely tighten. Back center and turn and center. Whether you shift weight, if you're a split stance, make this one your last one. And I'm going to do this to the opposite side. Come up, roll your shoulders, find all that awareness, float the arms forward. Here we go to that left side, just to the ribs. Inhale, turn, blow through that strong center. Keep your shoulder blades down on your ribs. Three. And turn. Four. And turn. Five. And turn. Hinge on over. Find your stance. Just do the ribs again. Head's going with you to start. Exhale. And exhale. Three. And turn. We're going to change the breath in two more. Turn. One. And turn now through the hips. This is your exhale. Inhale. If it bothers your back, stay with the other breath until you're strong. Three. Good. Four. One more. Now go over to your golf stance. Add the power with the shift of the legs. Keep your head looking down. And through the hips. Good. Two. Exhale, three. Exhale, four. And exhale, five. Soften through the arms, come up. We're going to bring those arms up overhead. Find your two fist distance apart here. If you need to go a little bit wider, don't go past your shoulder blades. So you can get halfway in between, a little bit wider than your armpits, but not quite as wide as your shoulders. We're going to add on to this. We're going to exhale on over to the right. Now turn and reach. Come back up, all the way up. Exhale over. Inhale, turn, look down. Exhale, look forward, draw yourself back up. Exhale, over. Inhale, turn, look down. Exhale, up, all the way up. Exhale, tip over. Turn, look down. Inhale, up. Exhale, up. One more, take it back over. Turn and look down. Bring it, look forward, come up. Make sure the shoulder blades are down. Knees are still slightly soft, tailbone lengthened. Exhale to the left, turn and look down. Exhale back forward, inhale up. Exhale over, lifting out those ribs, turn and look. Back forward, bring it up. Exhale over, turn and look, bring it forward, inhale up three. Exhale over, inhale, turn and look. Exhale up, here's four, last one. Take it over, turn and look, bring it up, draw it up. 
Big shoulder roll here. We'll sit our strap down. We're going to make our way down the floor. Keep everything kind of handy. Once you're down on your hands and knees, we're going to do a couple cat cows. And then we're going to stand on our knees for a little bit more mobility and balance. Make sure your fingers are spread underneath your shoulders. Middle toe, heel, in alignment with the back of your knees. And always lead with your pelvis for your cat cows. Just get something in here to move your spine. If you're standing, coming out of your car, truck, jeep, wherever you drive, you can always place your hands on your seat. You can place your hands on your knees and do a little cat cows too before you make your way out to the course. Now we're going to find ourselves standing on our knees. Weight is optional for this. Let's take that right leg forward, that retract, protract. We're going to do that here. Keep this knee right in line where the femur comes into the pelvis, knee cap with them. Check out to make sure that back foot, that the toes are in line with the heel on the back of the knee. Float your arms up with an exhale. Open back up. Inhale, close. If you want to challenge your balance even more, close your eyes. Exhale, open. Inhale, close. Exhale, open. Make sure you don't fall over. Inhale, close. Let's get one more this side. And close. Float the arms on down. I'm going to have you grab your weight if you like. This is where you could use that small ball, towel, or pillow. Hold it in the hands. Torso, just a regular torso twist to that. So, exhale, turn. Inhale, center. Bring out your abs as you turn. Back center. Tighten, tighten, tighten. Center three. So you're blowing through that straw. Center four. Going for eight. And center. Center, center, and, and center. Lower the shoulders, sit that on down, and let's change sides. Right leg back, left leg forward, the knee on that. Make sure this knee is following that middle toe as well as that back side. Middle toe following the ankle and the knee. Float the arms up forward, just five of these. Exhale as you peel back and open. Inhale and close. So if you want to challenge that balance again, close the eyes. Inhale forward. Exhale, close. Inhale forward. Exhale. Inhale five. And exhale. Inhale it forward and close. Give yourself a shoulder roll. Open the eyes. You can use it in the ball or your weight. Pick what's handy and what's comfortable for you at this point. Take a breath here. Exhale, blow through that straw. Inhale, back center. And center. Drawing those abs in. Three. Really rigging them out. Keep the shoulder blades down. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And whoops, I did two and too many. So now you have to do two on the other side. I'll run the parking lot. Standing joke for those who know me. Let's get the two on the other side to make it up. We have a bird out here who has been throwing herself at the window for almost a month now. There's our two. She's back and distracting me. She met me this morning at 5 o'clock. She's calling for mate that's not in here. It's a little lady cardinal. We're going to find our way back down on hands and knees. And we have a little set of quadrupeds we're going to do. We're going to hit some Superman and a few things on our side to finish out some of the mobility and core strength that you need. Spread those fingers wide. Extend back through those toes if you can. If you have really rigid arches, you may need to roll up your mat so your feet can hang off. So you have a connection here so you're not putting all the weight on your kneecaps and eventually have some issues with those. Now draw those abs in and up and engage your pelvic floor. Keep all of that there. And if you need to do that little rock to find is it level, do that little rock. We're going to start with the right arm. Exhale it forward. Thumb is up to the sky always so you don't damage your rotator cuff because when you go this way, you're contracting through the rear delt. You rotate on through your AC joint and you 
track all those ligaments and tendons that go through there. So keep that open. Now with that open, tap the pinky down, float it up. There's always a learning lesson in there, why I do things. And tap, so you know why, so it's not some kind of weird magic. One more here, and bring it in. Going functional anatomy. Rotate that thumb up, lift it up, tap it down. And two, keep that ab engagement. Keep everything level. Don't let your pelvis start to shift over because you lifted an arm up. Last one here. Bring that down. Fingers still spread. Float that left leg back by tucking the toes and just slide it. Now think of 12, 6, 3, and 9. Make sure your hips aren't up. Find that levelness. Squeeze your glute to lift the leg. Tap it down. And lift. Tap. Keep all that engaged. Don't want to start hanging towards the floor. One more here. Bring it down. Other side. Tuck those toes. Slide that leg back. Find where the pelvis is at. Squeeze through the glute. Tap. Squeeze. Tap. So squeeze your bum. Tap. Four. Tap. Five. Tap. Bring it down. Give yourself a cat cow. Little break there. And now we're going to put opposite limbs together. We're going to go right arm. Let's go left arm and right leg. So that so I can get that little break. Tuck your toes of your right leg. Send it back. Check your abs. Squeeze the glute to lift that side up. Press your pelvis back over to that right side. Don't want to start coming to the left. You don't want to be a table that's sloping. Now float that left arm on up. Think of how level everything is. Tap everything down, keep the abs, lift up. Tap, tap, tap and hold. Go to the corners of your mat. Tap down, lift, tap, lift, tap, lift, tap, lift. Bring them back in, draw them in, set them down, give yourself a cat cow, breathe for a second. Now find that awareness again. Press the ground away lightly through your limbs. Extend that left leg long by tucking your toes. Peek back at it. As you squeeze the glute, make sure your toes are still looking down versus out to the side or in. Turn them so they're looking down. At least encourage them. They may take time if the rotators are tight. And extend that long arm out. Make sure the hip isn't doing this and the shoulders aren't doing this. You're not trying to lift beyond your spine or where they should go. Now with your exhale, tap down, lift. And I do purposely hold you there to talk because you're working your stabilizers of your spine. Those who know me know that. Pause here. Go to your corners. We go slow. A, so you're working musculature, not going muscle endurance. B, so you're getting your stabilizer work. C, so you're... Brain has a process of how things work because everything works in steps through the neurons. Lift up, hold here, bring it in. If you just keep going from thing to thing to thing, there are no steps for it to process things. Draw those limbs in, give yourself a cat cow, and that helps with everything you do of how your brain functions to be able to have steps to draw on to help you through whatever it happens to be. Sit back in the child's pose for a moment and take the pressure off your wrist. And then we're going to go down on our belly for a set of supermen. You're going to lengthen your legs long to join me down there. And I'm going to have you start by reaching out with your toes so your big toes are connected. You're going to feel your kneecaps instantly draw up and keep that connection to the ground. Don't float your legs up to start with. You're going to start to feel more of your quad. You're going to feel if you want to press your pelvis into the ground, but do not press your pelvis to the ground. That causes some hyperextension in the back. Not only are you not able to fully use the muscles that you want to use for this exercise, you will hurt your back over time. It won't take long if you do them often. Now from there, just keep the glutes soft to start, but be aware that they're there. Draw your abs in and up, even though, of course, they're touching the ground. Start to draw some awareness in the chest. We'll extend the arms out long. You need something to rest your head on, have something to rest your head on. Draw your shoulder blades down, start to really pull them down and tighten through your abdominals to help with your lift with an exhale. Inhale, lower the upper body down. Draw the shoulders down and in and release. 
Draw them down and in for three. Thumbs are up. And release. Draw and lift. And release. Feel your back do the work. That's who should be doing the work versus your, your pecs throwing you up or your biceps. They keep this here and engage. So pull the shoulder blades down. Keep those abs in and up. And squeeze the shoulder blades into the spine. Now start to float the toes up. Squeeze the glutes to lift the legs. And release. Squeeze the glutes. Release two. Squeeze the glutes. Release three. Squeeze the glutes. Release four. Squeeze the glutes. Keep those abs firm to protect your back. And release. Now squeeze the glutes. Lift the upper body up. Slide the shoulder blades down and together. Release the upper body. Release the lower body. Lift the upper body. Squeeze the lift the lower body. Release the lower body and the upper body. Squeeze the glutes. Lift those legs. Pull the shoulder blades down. Squeeze them. Release the upper body and the lower body. Now put them both together slowly. Start with the upper body squeezing down, lifting. Squeeze those glutes. Lift the legs. Release everybody. And Full squeeze, lift nice and slow. Use that posterior chain. And release one more. Shoulder blades down towards each other. Use those upper abs, squeeze those glutes for the legs. Lower the upper body down, let it totally relax. Lower the right leg down, squeeze it up. Left leg down, squeeze it up. Right leg down, squeeze it up. Left leg down, squeeze it up. Those abs are still really firm. And left leg, lower both legs. Press yourself up by drawing your hands by armpits or belly. Press, find your cat. Give yourself a couple cat cows. Then we're going to grab the band again to go on your side and your small ball. You may want to wait when we get there. You may not. We're going to slide the band. Around our ankles, we're going to get a little bit more hip strength, isolated versus what we did standing with the band with the squats. We're going to get two different types of clams. We're going to get our internal and external. So somewhere down around your shin, if it's more comfortable for you, or if you've been doing clams for a while, go ahead and bring it up around your thighs, just never on your kneecaps. As you lie on your side, bring the heels in line with the fleshy part of your hips. Lift up through the rib cage. Engage those obliques. This is a make or break for being able to work the hips versus the lower back, doing everything for you. Keep that lifted, belly button pulled in. We're going to start with your external rotations. Your bottom hand can be here, it can be up to the sky. Top, um, top arm here or up to the sky. Bottom arm can be pulled another long. You can use your ball underneath your roll with your mat. Keep your shoulders down. Squeezing your glute, we'll lift that knee to the sky, feet stay connected, and release. So press right into that band. Nothing else should be moving. You should feel it very deep there. So squeeze it to lift, but slowly release. Don't let it just fall back down. Squeeze for five, release. Squeeze for six, release. Squeeze for seven, release. Squeeze for eight, release. Squeeze for nine. You should have a nice little burn going here. Squeeze for ten. Gently release. Take your ball and bring it ahead of you. Right by the crook of your armpit, it can be slightly lower, two or three ribs. With an exhale, send this forward, just reaching through your shoulder. Squeeze that shoulder blade to the spine to bring it back. Press it forward. Draw it back. Three. Going for five of these and back. This is some great shoulder mobility, especially if they're tight. And if you're having trouble moving those during your swing, that you feel like you've got a little hiccup there. One more here. Now angle this going towards your eyebrows. So press up towards that corner of the mat, draw back down. Reach through it, squeeze it back in. Here's three, squeeze it in. You could use a water bottle, something that's a little taller. That will roll if you don't have a ball. And in. We're going to sit that aside. Bring the hand back comfortably. Check and make sure the glutes, abs are engaged. Now let's go for our external rotators. If you have good mobility, meaning nothing down here is wiggling, throwing you, you can lift easily here. You can go to the next step and then use that band. Most people don't. 
I'd say 75% of us, unless you regularly do them, don't have the mobility. At least one side does it. You want to keep it even. You can go into that band and lift from here, rotating up. You pick where you need to be. I'm going to show the level that most of us need to be in. Feet are flexed, keep the knees together, rotate up, tap down, and lift. Keep the obliques lifted. Make sure you're not throwing yourself forward. So place your hand here on your hip. If you feel like, oh, my pelvis is taking me forward, stop so you can actually get the mobility and the strength in that part of the rotation. So seven, tap, eight, tap. Nine, tap, and ten. Gently lower down. Keep everything engaged. If you want to wait, we're going to get five big rotations here. Light weight to start. You could always build up. Hand is hovering right above the ground. With an exhale, open all the way up to where you control it so you won't do this. You don't want to do that. You're just going, oh, so that will be dependent on how much weight you can do. So you rotate through those ribs. Inhale back. Couple inches above the ground. Exhale, open. Inhale, close. Exhale, open. Keep the shoulder at your ear. Close three. Exhale, open. We'll get that one extra in case you tipped on over with me. And open. Close. Here's our bonus one. Exhale. It's always good to feel it out. Lower that down. Change sides. So we're going to find your place on the other side. We're going to start with our external rotation. Find what you need underneath your neck. We'll lift up those obliques and keep them engaged. Make sure the band didn't slide. Flex your feet. Top hand where you need it. Just don't do this. This puts a lot of pressure in your AC joint and your neck. Squeeze that neck loop and release. Blah, blah, blah. I lost my tongue there. Press in that band. Squeeze that glute. Release two. Press and squeeze, feet stay connected, shoulders down for four, abs are fully connected, Lift and squeeze, release six, Lift and squeeze, release seven. The abs will start to come a little bit more automatic. It's going to probably take six weeks if you just usually let them hang free and they may be sore for a while. Let's get one more, gently release, now grab that ball. Is it will actually happen. You'll feel the difference in your strength and especially in your swing. Find that place near the bottom of your ribs. Roll this on out. Protract through there like we did standing when we did the open closes. Exhale. Draw back into that shoulder blade. Roll it out. Keep the obliques lifted. Take it out for three. Feel that scapula move along your rib cage. Here's four. Take it out, bring it in five, and take it out going the line of your eyebrows. Press it up to that corner of the mat, squeeze it back into the spine. Extend it out, squeeze it in. Extend three, squeeze. Extend four, squeeze. Here's five. Draw it back in. We'll sit this off to the side for one moment. Now let's get those external ro uh, excuse me, internal rotators. Make sure everything's still lifted. Again, I'm going to demonstrate down here. Take your hand right on your bum so you can feel when that lifts and tap. Make sure both feet are flexed. Two and lift. Three, make sure you're not doing this. Four and lift. Five, lift. Six, lift. Seven, lift. If you have your hand down, make sure it's all the way down. Don't tender cupcake. Nine and ten. Awesome there. And if you want that weight again, I gotta wait for me. But that rotation, grab it if you want. Uh, I know I don't need weight because you already sat it down. Do with what you're needing because your arm weighs something. Let's exhale our weight open. Rotate through those ribs. Inhale, close. Exhale, open. Close to one side. It's always going to be stronger than the other. But we seek to balance it because that helps everything we do. Here's four. Exhale, open. We have that bonus one. Good. Exhale, open. And close. Get your bonus. And then we close. We're going to sit our weight off to the side. We're going to slide the band on off of us. We're going to roll on our back for five more bridges. And then we're going to start stretching from there. Hoorah, you made it.
Take the feet two fists distance apart. Toes are looking forward, flat on the ground, arms are long at your side. With an exhale, just press to the legs first. Just feel the difference if the glutes don't do anything. And then back up. And now and add those glutes in with it and lower too. So just like a squat, you're pressing the ground away. And through. And press up. Don't totally lower and totally release everything. Four. Here's your last one. Just kind of balance everything out there. Good. Lower down one vertebrae at a time. Pair yourself and lift up into one more bridge. We're going to do a nice stretch for your lower back. So lift on up. Take your thumbs to the bottoms of your ribs and pinkies right at the tops of the hips. Release your right glute and just turn. So you're bringing nine o'clock up to the sky. Let it come center. Bring three o'clock up to the sky. Let it come center. Lower and into our vertebrae. Bring nine o'clock back up. Center, three o'clock back up. Center, lower down another inch. We're gonna do this all the way until your bum connects. It's a great mobility movement and stretch for those multi-fidi. Good. Keep going. Take your time with this. Inch by inch. And you can't slide your bum anymore, even it out. And then hug your knees into your chest. First, release everything. So let your back go ahead and flatten for a moment so you can get your gluteals. Give yourself a breath here, circle through your ankles. Then find your neutral spine and hug the knees in. Nice big breaths here. With an exhale, Let's send the left leg on up to the sky. Push that heel right on up. You can take the hand behind and give yourself a little extra hamstring stretch and pull it towards you. Then keep that neutral spine. Then you're going to send it down towards the left corner of the mat. You're going to keep hugging that right knee in. Give yourself three big deep circles right to the burst of the hip. Keep your spine nice and neutral. And then keeping your heel down towards your hip. Reach down if you need to use your yoga strap or a towel, nothing stretchy. Go ahead and grab it. Flex your foot. Keep that heel towards the hip as you go to a figure four stretch here. Let your right hand just be a guide so the knee doesn't fall in towards your shoulder. Don't try to press it away. And just give yourself that nice rotation as you pull that ankle towards your navel. One more breath here. Rotate back neutral, then lift it up to where you would normally go for your figure four stretch. Same thing. Right hand's just a guide. Foot is nicely flexed and rotate it in. Bring it back center. Now take that leg and cross right over and find the floor. Whether it's up by your thigh, whether it's down by your shin, just find the floor with that foot. And let the knee fall over towards this left side. Try to keep that hip down, but don't force it so you feel your neck tensing up or you start to cramp in your inner thigh. Then let it open on up. Take both arms up overhead and clasp through your thumbs. Reach center first and then lift up through the shoulders and arms and take this over to the left corner of your mat. Just lengthening through the spine, getting all through the sides. We're going to lift up again and come center, and now take it to the right side. You should feel this a little bit more on the abdominals. We did a lot of twisting and oblique work today. Come back center. Release the arms. Carefully release. Fold the knee up first. Hug it in for a moment, then draw the other one in. Keep it in both in, then press that. Put up to the sky. You can draw that in again. Keep your neutral spine. Keep the foot flexed and then send it to the corner of the mat. Keep that left heel down by your hips. You take that right hand and start to draw it in. Left hand again is just the guide. Shoulders are down. Yes, you can do relax your abdominals. Foot is flexed. One more breath here. Then come back to a neutral position and take it to where you normally would for your figure four stretch. And again, 
left hand is just a guide versus trying to push it. Sometimes on the other side, pulling it, holding it stable as you pull that ankle towards you. Keep that right leg heavy with this next breath. We're going to sit this leg down across. Again, where the foot can contact the ground. And then try to let the knee just start to come down towards the ground, getting a little bit more different angle at that glute max, but not to the point of cramping in your inner thigh. One more breath here, and then release and let that open on up. Just don't let it rest on your kneecap. So if it's on your shin, if it's close, go on either side. Just letting it open. Take one arm back at a time. I'm going to take the arms and lift up through the shoulders as you connect it to those thumbs and take it over to the left side of your mat. The abdomen. Now we'll bring that out. Come back center for a moment. And then take it over. Getting that other oblique. They worked hard for you. They work hard in the golf game for you. Carefully lift up and come back center. And then we'll bring that knee up on cross. Hug both knees in again for a moment. And we'll sit one down at a time. Keep them a little wide. Arms out to a T. Just basic spinal twist. Keeping the feet so they're not connected. That way you're going to get through inner and outer rotators and your sacrum more efficiently. If it's comfortable for you, pick up that left foot, place on top of that right knee or thigh. If it's not a comfortable feeling, just inch over that right foot away, but don't take the knee past the armpit. Either will get you a little bit more on up into that rotator, higher up in the femur head, and where the psoas major feathers down. Give yourself a breath here, then release the foot. We'll bring the foot in, find that center balance, squeeze through the glutes, adjust back as needed for the other side. Give yourself a moment to settle, don't go for the kill, let everything settle for a moment. Again, the process is for the brain. Now make your decision, you want the foot up there on the leg or knee, or are you walking that foot away? Nice big breaths here. One more, and then we'll either walk the foot back in, we'll take it off the knee, squeeze the glutes, hug back in, give yourself a couple more ankle circles. We'll lower one leg down at a time, and we'll finish with the pigeon stretch. If the pigeon stretch isn't comfortable, go back to that figure four stretch for you. A lot of variations you can do with this. We're not going to go to the traditional yoga where you go from down dog and fling the leg on through. We're just going to start from hands and knees. Draw your right leg through. If you know your hips are tight and you need to stay in king pigeon, stay here. Swing it through just a little. Sit over on that hip. Line your belly button up with that kneecap. Lift up through the chest as you just allow the hips to open up. If that's the comfortable spot you know you, know you need to be in for this, go for that there. If you're here going, I think I can lower myself down. You can keep that foot underneath there. Take the ball towel or pillow put underneath that other hip to bring the ground to you. And then you can start to lower down to your elbows and possibly all the way down. If you need to roll up your neck, put it underneath your head, do that as well. We're gonna hold here for four breaths. So once you find that point, so you can actually settle into it and let that hip start to open up. And of course, if you're feeling gumby like and that shin will go in the same line as your mat, and you can go all that there, go for it. As you see, my body's not going to be like yet this morning. Maybe by the end of the day. Give yourself two more breaths, no matter where you pick to be. And that includes if you're on your back doing figure four again, because this is not a comfortable position. And then with that third inhale, start to release the leg if you're on your back, bringing it in and hugging everything in. If you're here in some variation of pigeon, lift yourself back up, bring the leg forward. Swing back on your knees and hands, cat-cow, go to the other side. Give yourself a couple rock side to side if you're on your back doing figure four. And then we're going to swing that opposite leg forward, find where it needs to be, and typically one side is more mobile than the other. That's normal. 
So if you're in your king pigeon, you're up here, you're kind of in between, you're going to be here, tuck your little ball top of pillow here, if you're gumby, lay that leg on up. And if you need that back, toe tuck because you have knee issues or just it does not feel right because of your anatomy, keep your back toe tuck to help you tell the position. Find where you need to be and just settle in and breathe. One neck can open up. Nice slow breath. Three more breaths here. Taking your time. Giving your body the strength. Getting that gain better. Because it always feels better if you feel good about how you play. Even if it's not a competitive thing. Nobody likes to be injured going out doing something they love. You like to feel good about it. One more breath. And then we'll start to make our way. On up, hands and knees for everybody to give yourself a couple cat cows. And golf is one of those games that changes within the game if the weather happens to change on you and the wind direction changes. Give yourself a couple here. Do any other stretches that you need that you know of? I hope this is what you were looking for, and I hope this will help everybody. Have an absolutely wonderful day.